Good day, my Mati Baboon. We are back in our Grim Dawn walkthrough. And today, we are going to do two optional areas, the Corrupted Tomb and the Arkovian Coliseum. And I know what you are going to say. French Baboon, you said in the last episode that we were going to do the Broken Hills. Are you so stupid that you can't remember what you said a few days ago? Well, you know that your French Baboon have some brain damage, so you will not be far from the truth. The reality, though, is that the latest version of Grim Dawn added new optional areas. And because it came out not too long time ago, your French Baboon just forgot about them. So if we go directly north from the Broken Hills Rift Gate, we enter this new area and here there is a new dungeon called the Corrupted Tomb. Although it looks like it, that's not going to be your typical Akovian dungeon. This one is going to be filled with Thonian creatures, so be sure to have at least some Chaos Resistance. We get the Armored Mutator, which has literally no influence for us, as we do not deal physical pierce or resistance damage. So let's go! The first floor is going to be extra short, and nothing in particular here. So here we go on the second floor. Hello Nithel, nice to meet ya. Well that was quick, seems he did not want to continue to play with us. We get the Veil's Edge, which is a lightning weapon, and at the same time let's also level up. One point into Decay, and then more point into the Oathkeeper Mastery Bar. I don't have enough inventory space anymore, so I am going to go back to Devil's Crossing soon to sell all the crap. But let's finish the Corrupted Tomb first, so let's throw away some of these shields that takes a lot of space, and let's continue. Soon we are going to meet Narenker, the ostracized, and he is not your typical guy. He does chaos damage, and that was to be expected, but he also does physical, fire, and vitality damage. You can tell that he's in the middle of an existential identity crisis, experimenting and trying new things, but anyway, he's already dead. No more existential crisis, Narenker. You can rest in peace now. We get three epics, that's very nice. What is less nice is that they are all garbage for us. They are all for lightning builds. And what is it with all these lining items? Did Craft Entertainment got lobbied by the Association of Lining Builds and now only drops lining items? That's three out of four epics in a row now that were mainly lining based. Give me some vitality items, damn it! Anyway, we have now finished the Corrupted Tomb. And before going to the Arcovian Coliseum, let's go back to the Blisco thing to sell all our items. Hello Luther, I need your iron bits. Okay. Crap, 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 crap. Another crap. More crap. Let's have a look at these handguards. We trade some chaos resistance for elemental resistance. More armor and casting speed. I'll take it. These masks have more armor but no resistances. And most of the rest is going to be useless. Hmm, I like these pod runs. We will get more pierce armor, more armor, and I am going to equip it. We still cannot equip the Doomforge breastplate. And let's see here. What about this pants? Although it has more armor, not enough resistances. I think it's a bad trade-off. Hmm. 
this book should be worse than the bond we have. Yes, you see our DPS is dropping when we equip it. So let's sell it. So I'm just going to keep these two items. Now it's time to get back our components. Oh, and wait a moment. We finally got a Mark of the Traveler, and we also have a few Mark of Driggs. I am very happy about that. Let's first go see Darlet. I really want back this Kale hide. Let's get back the scale hide. And now let's remove the mutagenic icon from both our weapon and our offhand. And we are going to replace the mutagenic icons with Mark of Driggs. Mark of Driggs are basically an improved version of the mutagenic icon. They give us more acid and poison damage. And in addition to that, they give us an actual useful skill called Driggs Infinite Gaze. Let's put this skill in our quick bar. And I am also going to add the Mark of the Traveler to our boots. And the reason this component is very good is because of the 8% movement speed increase. We of course don't split on the 18 health regeneration, but we really want to cap our movement speed to 135% as soon as we can. Let's also put back an unholy inscription in our gauntlets and the scale hide in our shoulder armor. Finally, let's also clean up our inventory a little. And let's go. By the way, now that we are respected with the Blisco thing, we have a new quest available with Kasparov. Come, come. We have an errand you must perform immediately. Yes, at once. Do not tarry. There are experiments to be run, and Darlin and I require explosive materials immediately. No time for questions. These magical artifacts aren't going to break themselves down, now, are they? Are you still here? Head to the mines around the Arcovia foothills and old Arcovia immediately. You really think we just have that to do, right? We already have the three dynamites from the Dangerous Curiosity, so let's talk to him again. Let us start the experiment immediately. Darlet, prep the blast furnace. Of course, I am fully confident that it will function as intended. Well, uh, there may be a slight chance that we will tear apart reality when the artifact is consumed by the conflagration, but chances of that are very low. So low. One in a billion. You're safe. Really? Ah, I was correct. Just look at these wonderful components. We can finally begin studying artifacts properly. If only the Erelon Museum Society could see me now, they would be absolutely furious. Oh, and uh, if you wish, you can have Dalek break down any items you find. Just bring her more explosives. Oh man, that Kasparov. And with that, we have unlocked a new option with Dalet. The dismantle function. This lets you break down an object into materials and components at the cost of a dynamite. Dismantling epic or legendary can be useful and can give rare materials, but if you really ask me, dismantling is only useful later in the game when you start to get a lot of dynamites and dupe epics or legendaries. It is absolutely not something that we want to use now because we need to save all the dynamite that we can find. Anyway, let's take a break and now let's go to the Arcovian Museum. I could have gone there in the last episode, but I completely forgot the existence of this area. Same with the Corrupting Tomb. It's a new area that was added to the game with the version 1.1.9. Last time I also forgot to talk to these two folks. Please do something, he's going to kill me. I'll handle this. Hold on there, Traveler. You wouldn't want this pretty lady's brain to spill all over the ground, would ya? Let's see some iron. Thank you kindly. Yes, go on on your merry way now. So you can choose to kill him, but if you just give them some iron and then talk to the woman again, you will see that your baboon has been conned. You poor stupid thing. Gotta say, you make me feel a little guilty. It's all a sham, hon. You got swindled. We do what we gotta do out here, and it sure beats aiming a gun at every traveler that crosses us. Now get going before you give away our little scheme. A safe place? I forget what that even means. And you'd really take us in? Even after what we did? I... I don't know what to say. I... Thank you. 
What a sucker, this baboon. So we will find them back in Devil's Clothing, and we can learn a little more about them if we would talk to them there. And with that said, let's be on our way to the Coliseum. To go there, we just need to break this wasp nest. We get the weakened mutator, not a too bad one for us. We are going to hit monster more often due to the offensive ability increase, but in exchange we will do less critical damage, not a big change. So this Coliseum is going to be filled with skeletons. And if we go this way, at the far end of the Coliseum, we are going to meet... Wait, I don't like my quick bar arrangement. I want to swap Siphon Sewers and Drig Infinite Gaze. And now, on the right with this ghost team, we have Karnat aka the Coliseum Amalgam Chill Blood. And on the left, we have the Undefeated, the French Baboon. Karnath is going to deal a mix of Cold Lightning, Bleeding and Pierce damage. And as you can see, he is going to regularly summon Ghost. And we got him. Or not. Like Warden Krieg, he comes back from the dead with his full HP bar. And we need to kill him a second time. That's okay, we are not in a hurry and have all the time in the world to play Grim down. We are going to slowly smelt him until he disappears from good this time. And he is dead. Let's also finish his friend by Razar. And let's see what we got. We got Karnath Monster Infrequent, the Chill Blood's Carcass, and again, not a useful object for us, that's more for a cold necromancer. If we continue to the west, there is a chance that there is going to be an exalted chest behind the Coliseum Arcs, but there is nothing. Unlucky. That's alright. Let's go back north. We climb these stairs up. And around here, we should be finding some notes. Here they are. Sometimes we can find a totem here, but nothing for us, unfortunately. And I don't think there is anything else interesting in the Coliseum. So let's go back to Devil's Clothing, because I think I have found a better helmet than the one we currently have. So I want to equip it. It has less resistance, but I'm still going to equip it. Also, I have noticed that we were not sustaining our energy during battle, so instead of adding a polished emerald, this time I will add an ectoplasm. This will give us more energy and energy regeneration. And with that, my friends, that's going to be it for today. I hope that you liked the episode, and the next one, I promise that this time we are going to do the Broken Hills. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to support your favorite French baboon, and see ya!